There's no way to hide. Let's get down to it. Hello, my name's Nia, and my question is, when did you know netball is what you wanted to do? Um, I don't know. I just went through school, and I just loved netball, and I loved all sport, but netball I always really, really loved. It was the um, sport that I always looked forward to um, in the week. Um, I didn't really know, and I wasn't really – in school, I wasn't thinking about being a silver fern or I wasn't thinking about that. I definitely thought it would be pretty cool. Um, <laughs> but I think I just, um, netball was one that I just really enjoyed. So I always just played it. And like you guys, it's fun playing with your friends. So that's sort of why you um, sort of why you keep doing it. Um, and then now we still get to play with our friends, eh, guys? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what about you, Burles? <laughs> Um, I'm the same, really. Just played it through school and loved going away on tournament weeks and everything. It was awesome. Like Kate said, you get to play with your mates. And and then, yeah, kind of just kept playing out of school and then eventually wound up here. <laughs> yeah, nice. No, mine's quite similar. I think I did a couple of sports growing up and it got to, like, swimming as well, swimming and netball. That was, like, neck and neck. And my swimming coach said, oh, like, you're missing too many swim trainings. You have to pick. And I was like, okay, I love going to netball training and I hate going to swimming training. So <laughs> Easy pick. That's how, that's how yeah. I knew. Yeah. Nice. Good question. Next. <laughs> My name's Brianna. Um. Have you always played the same position and how did you, and if you haven't, how did you change from the position to what Bills. you kind of Yeah, Bills, you go. You've... Um, I actually have kind of always played defence. I think it's because when I was younger, I was a little bit taller. Well, I was tall for my age group and so they kind of just put me there and I kept playing through school and so I never really actually changed positions. I am... Um, I played Goldie and goal keep going through school and I still kind of play there now. What about you guys? Did you guys ever change? Me no. <laughs> Most of us. Most of us. Um, I, when I was growing up, I played everywhere. Um, I think because I came from a small town. Um, so I just got chucked in like every position. Like say if that person was like, if the goal defence was the strongest in that team, I was chucked into goal attack. So it was kind of <laughs> like that growing up, which I think was kind of cool because I kind of, like played them all and knew which one I really loved. But I think like growing up, I I was a bit short for my age. So I got ch chucked into the mid court. Um, <laughs> and I can play all three mid court, which is really cool. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I've always thought I played mid court. Haven't really moved out of it. Um, kind of wish I tried circle D. Yeah. But, um, love mid court. So I just play between wing defence and centre now. And that's sort of where I've always been. Hi. Hi. Um, and my question was, have you ever had teammates that didn't believe in you, your ability? And if so, what did you do? Oh, wow. I think I've always been really, well, especially when I was going through school, just like we said, played with friends, so it was fun. And I think it was, um, like, looking back, it was just really quite chill and quite fun just playing with your friends. As I've been in ANZ, I've been so lucky, the girls I've played with and the leaders I've been with. Um, I look back to when I first made the steal. I had Gina Crampton, Shannon Saunders, um, all these girls that just wanted to help you and make you better. So even if you weren't doing the job at that time, they were going to help you. So then you could learn. Um, so I've been really lucky. Um, I can imagine it would be really hard um, in that way, but I think it's just doing your own thing and finding those players that will help you, like the Genas and the Shans were to me. Um, hi, I'm Quinn. And um, do you guys have any tips for us on how we can improve our network game? Okay? Ooh. Yeah, go on Netflix. Yeah. <laughs> um, my favourite quote, actually, it's quite like a cheesy one, but it's hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. So I think it's quite easy when 
you're younger and if you're one of those players that kind of has that natural skill set that you might not work as hard as some other players and it's always those ones that I think come shining through as you get older because they're the ones willing to put in the work. Obviously, you guys are still quite young and so the enjoyment and the fun factor is very, very important. You're not going to keep playing if you're not having fun, so that's number one. And then number two, just have yeah, keep working hard and you'll make some improvements. Yeah, I think Kate, Hef and I have a similar story in like the way like we were growing up through school and we never really, really like, I don't know about yours, Kate, really, <laughs> but um, we were never in like the New Zealand secondary schools. <laughs> <laughs> like we like big names growing up and I think that's what backs Kate Burley's story about just like work hard. If you really love the sport and work hard, like when you're growing up, like you can definitely get there. And I think like at your guys' age, don't be like – don't hold back if you don't make those teams because mm. if you keep working hard and you really like have that love for the sport then you you can definitely get there so just remember that I think yeah because me and Maddie we were the same age and we went to all the secondary schools camps and all that and we never made the team the toilet we never made it we were like the two battlers that just it was like I don't know, it was tough it kept going but we like these two have said we just loved it so we kept turning up to all the trainings every opportunity we had would show up and just because we enjoyed it and never felt like I don't look back and even think about any netball trainings that I really dreaded um, turning up to all the fun camps and the weekends or anything so um, yeah totally agree with what they used to have said. Did you repeat the quote you said earlier? Um, so it's hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. <clears throat> That's not Thank you. Hi, I'm Kiara. I'm a Circle D. Yeah. <laughs> um, my question is, have you ever umpired a game and did it help your game? It is hard. I'm going to say that right now. Umpiring <laughs> is tough. We have a whole nother level of respect for them when we try and umpire, I reckon. I mean, I find it difficult. What about you guys? No, I definitely find it hard. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I avoid it. But yeah. I think when you do it, you definitely have that. You know, it's probably quite good because then we um, realise that it is a hard job. So yeah. we have to be a little bit kinder to our umpires sometimes. Yes. But um, I think it's it's a good skill to um, learn. I think we, we've, well, I don't know about you two, but I assume you guys have, but I had to do quite a bit when I was playing club and school on Saturdays and stuff. And I used to dread it. I hated it. When I saw my name on the list, I was disgusted. <laughs> um, but... I think it is a good skill to have and um, it does help you understand and see the game from a different angle, I guess. But, um, yeah, I don't do much of it. <laughs> Hi, my name is Zoe and my question is, have you always wanted to be in the Silver Ferns netball team? Who wants to go first? Maddie can. Yeah, I can go. Um, yeah, ever since I was a little girl, I always wanted to be a silver fern. So, yeah, for me, it's always been a thing, which is cool. I think it's one of those things that you think of when you're a little kid, but you don't actually know if it's really going to happen. So I'm actually new. This is my first time in the squad, so I'm a newbie. I haven't actually played for the ferns yet, and I'm still feeling quite shocked and overwhelmed by the whole thing that it's actually kind of true. Um so it definitely has been a dream for a long time, but it feels like something that's kind of out of your reach for a little bit, and so it's quite cool to be here now. Yeah, I remember growing up, I always wanted to be, but I used to always play it down because it just felt like it was so far away. It almost felt impossible. Yeah. I would always was like, wow, that's just crazy. How do they even get close to doing that? So I think in my head, I've actually always played it down because it was quite scary to me how... Um, far away but then before I guess everyone's journey is different but I think um, like Burl, Kate Burles has had to work really hard for like the last few years me and Maddie have been working hard too but, <laughs> with, um, <laughs> but you know it's everyone's journeys are different and I think um, it's pretty cool to see um, how all the if everyone's you know we've actually we were dreaming of it now it's actually happening so it's pretty cool. Hi, my name's Betty. 
My question is, did you ever regret not playing another sport? Um, I think we all played another sport up until quite a long time by the sounds of it. Mads just talked about her swimming. Kate actually represented New Zealand in cricket. Um, and I played water polo up until about year 13. So we, I think it's important to play other sports. It, well, it grows your skill level as well, even just like ball skills, fitness, anything like that. And it keeps things interesting. But also then I guess you get to a point where you kind of have to make that decision on where you want to go and what path you want to take. And that's always a hard one. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously we all chose netball because we're sitting here right now, but yeah. it's definitely important to give other sports a try and, yeah, keep everything fun. Yeah, I played lots of sports and cricket and netball were the two that stuck. And when Maddie said that um, about her swimming and how she dreaded swimming trainings and loved netball trainings, yeah. I was sort of similar towards the end. And that was pretty much, um, the, it was almost the enjoyment factor that actually was the decider for me. Um, but I cannot stress, like when I talk to like younger girls like you guys, I always, the one thing I just want to get across is how um, I think important or how beneficial it is to play lots of sports. I think um, all three of us played heaps. And um, I think it just, it's like skill sets and everything like that. I think cricket, for example, I think I've lost quite a bit of coordination since I've stopped playing <laughs> cricket. It really helped my coordination, but um, it's everything. It's just learning from different coaches, playing with different people. Um, it's, I think it's massive. So at your girl's age, um, don't get too worried about just focusing in on netball because you want to be a sore fern or focusing in on rugby because you want to be a black fern. I think every sport can complement each other massively. Yeah, so that's, I reckon, a really key thing. Um, oh, um, hi, I'm Asha, and um, do you guys have any rituals before you play a game? <laughs> Who's got some good ones? We all fake hands. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We put a little bit oh. of a fan on. The cameras are very yeah. high definition. Yeah, <laughs> not very flattering. Yeah. Um, I don't like poo. I try and like every game wear the same like Spanx and bra yeah. and socks. Um, mm. to um, be fair, yeah. sometimes we have back to back games and it doesn't work. You can't do mm. it. But like, I really try and wear the same like sports bra and socks and stuff. No, so I, I guess that's like my little. Rip. I'm the exact same. Yeah, I'm my the same. Sports group. bra, my spandies. My undies, yeah. like when we had the <laughs> games at World Cup back to back, I was hand washing, <laughs> <laughs> so I could use them. Yeah, that's so. Oh, so that is a I think I never actually think that I'm that superstitious, but that is one thing that I always keep the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I always used to have a hair one too with my hair in a braid, but I've kind of gone off that now. Yeah, but, you're um, you're changing it yeah. up. One of my big things was ponytail braid, um, mm. bile, but. I've kind of changed that now, so yeah. <laughs> you have changed it up. <laughs> hey, I'm a mum. I, I <laughs> do you do paper scissors rock at the start of your game? Oh, the the, that game, the wee game thing when you run around the court. No, 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 the ball. Who gets, who gets the ball or goal? <laughs> oh, we do a um, coin. They, yeah, coin toss. They do a coin toss. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, but <laughs> so sometimes we play the game too. <laughs> I played the game. Yeah, it's a great game. Oh yeah. Um. Hi, Maddie. Did you go to Girls High? Bangare. Bangare Girls High. Yes, I did. I actually oh. saw. Oh. Hey, we're going. Um, some of us are going there next Most year. Of Most of us. Oh. And oh. Oh. Hey. so excited. Where are you guys based? What school are you guys? Uh, what school was that? Sorry, I didn't hear. Uh, oh, yes, yeah. Oh, nice. That's so exciting. Um, yeah, I went. So I I... <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to come with us? Sorry, yes. come visit us. <laughs> yeah I, I do go back up north every summer so definitely I used to pop into my primary school um when I went back home but yeah I can definitely 
go back to Whangarei Girls. I actually do. Who's the principal at the moment? Casey and Johnston. Oh. oh, okay. It has changed. I use, I still keep in contact with the old principal, but yeah, I can try something out. You mean, you mean at Whangarei? Sorry? It's Sonia Lockyer. Oh, oh what's Girls High? Yeah, what's oh, Girls High? Um, I have one more question. Um, when you, how many trainings do you have a week, and do you ever get like vacations or holidays and stuff? <laughs> it sort of changes through the year. Um, <laughs> I just had a wee vacation. <laughs> um, it changes. I think at the moment we're pretty um getting back into. We've had a wee break. Um. After World Cup, um, we had a few weeks off. I was able to have a wee holiday, which was nice. Um, and now we're back into pretty, um, I guess, hard out training. Um, how many would we do a week? Um, probably a couple a day. Yeah. A couple yeah. of days, five, yeah. six times, five, six days a week. And that's like a gym and like an equal training. Um, mm. Yeah, yeah. Tell them the different types of training, Maddie. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I could like say just I'll go back to like kind of like how we just A and Z because I feel like Silver Ferns changes a lot. So A and Z has a better like week to week, but we'd usually have yeah like two trainings Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and that would be like maybe a gym in the morning and then a court session. Um, and then actually that would be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday would be day off. And then Thursday would be like a gym and we'd have like a match play. So that's when we'd play, we'd usually play like the Wellington men's team. So they would come in and train against us just to get, you know, kind of prep for our game during the week. And then say our game was on Sunday, we would train maybe once or twice on the Friday. And then on the Saturday we'd come together for like maybe like an hour and do like a quick little like blast on the court, um, before our game on a Sunday. And then you usually travel on the Saturday too if it's an away game. Um, and then if you play on a Sunday, then usually the weeks kind of change because then if you play on the Sunday, then the Monday now becomes kind of like your recovery day, travel day. Um, that's when we like go to the pool or do yoga, like all that kind of stuff. So it definitely, definitely changes a bit. Um, but, yeah, mostly we do like two trainings a day and we usually say have like one um, day off a week and then maybe like another one, but that's like a recovery um, travel day. So, yeah. Hi, ladies. Um, my name's Ursula. I'm the girls' coach. Um, and we've just, you know, we've just come from a, um, a late game and we've had a loss. And so what's your tips on how do you recover from, um, from a loss? How do you come back oh, from that? Kate and I had a lot of experience. Um, oh, this this year. Year. Yeah, if, if you guys watch the ANZ, Kate and I played for the Steel, and so we actually lost every game of the season, um, <laughs> which was tough. Um, I think it's important to take away the positives. If the game has been and gone, you can't change it now, and so it's important to see what you can improve on because I'm guessing you guys will have another game tomorrow. So you can yeah. take some learnings away from maybe what went wrong, what you can improve on, but you've got to focus on the positives too. Otherwise, it just brings you down. Hey, Hef. Yeah, small wins. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I think at the start when we were losing and still, I think we lost the first – well, we definitely we lost the first four games. Yeah. But we – and we – um, it was really hard not to get really negative about it because there was – it just wasn't going well. And, um, and then I sort of – I'd met with some different coaches and talked to some different people and they were like, what do you focus on? Like, what is your measure of like, I guess, performance or that you're doing like your measure of success, I guess. And then it, it kind of made me realize that I was honestly just basing it off winning and losing. And so um, I had to start focusing on little things, probably more specific to my own job. And that definitely helped me get through the season, but then also have little goals and actually, I guess, start performing better myself. So um shifting your focus because it's sport you're going to have those games it's just mm -hmm. the way it is um and got to have a different measure that can kind of put you back on track and I think we didn't we didn't win a game but we got a lot better we got better which is important so they <laughs> that was the thing that, yeah and that was the thing we were having the second half of the season we were having good games 
and we were still losing um, to the re reality of it was that we had to play really well to keep with the other team. So I think um, once we kind of changed our mindset and um, just started focusing on like, are we actually getting better or if not, what do we need to do? And it actually just kind of helped us get through the season, I feel, because it was looking yeah. pretty tough at the start. Um, yeah, if that kind of makes sense. Yeah, no, that's, that's, um, do you, and how do you deal with, you know, you're in a, a pressure game, um, I don't know, it might have been um, a game where you were playing the, the next lowest seed, maybe, and you were, um, you know, it was a, it was a game where you could have a, have a really good hit out and potentially win, and so it was pressure. So how did you deal with pressure? I'm sort of, I have, am still learning a lot about myself and how I actually deal with it, because sometimes I think that I'm stressed, like, I don't know, it's still learning that... Um, continuously about myself but I think similar to what I said before um just try not to get all um I guess worked up in the um I guess when the crowd's loud or when the other team is um it's just neck and neck and I think just going back to your few week key focuses and what gets you and keeps you in the game I think um each game I think the Mads and girls are the same they have little key focuses and little things that they go back to that can get them back in the game so that's sort of for me anyway, I just try to have a few little things that um, when it gets a little bit scary or gets a little bit um, intense, I know that I can just think about those things. No, yeah, I agree. I think we get taught a lot in like the space about like what can you fall back to? Like if you get into those kind of high pressure situations, then it's kind of like fall back to what you need to put at. So if you know you're on the circle edge and you can like – your feeding is like a hundred percent from the circle edge and just make sure you're like working to the circle edge or if you're like really good at your pass and cuts like just like do that to the circle edge so I think it's just really like targeting and knowing what you're good at and just um focusing on that if you ever get to those like tough situations perfect answers don't even need to add to that one <laughs> <laughs> Will you give us free tickets? <laughs> <laughs> I um, I might turn the camera around so you can see everyone that's here. Okay. okay. Cool. Yeah. Let me figure out how to take this. <laughs> do you yeah, do that? Does anybody know how to do that? Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay, great voice. Oh. <laughs> Came back around. Yeah. There we go. Hello, say hi. 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 <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> hey, someone, yeah, go, Lacey. Oh, do you have any tips on how we can improve our ball placement? What was that? Ball placement. Oh. Ball placement. Maddie? Yeah, Maddie's a <laughs> Martha. No. Um, yeah, I, like, I think feel like this year is where I really, like, kind of, not, like, mastered it, but just kind of worked it out. I think it's knowing your shooters really well because, um, obviously, like, you could see the space, but the shooter necessarily doesn't see that space as well. So I think really getting to know your shooters and um, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, um, and then also reading the defender um, is a big part of it as well. Um, so, like, if they're on, like, one side, obviously they – well, hopefully, if the shooter's really chopped. If they're, like, on the side, put it just completely on the other side because they're stuck on the body. If they're on the back, their space is in the front because they're stuck on the back. And then, again, if the defender's stuck on the front – the best way is completely over their head. So I think key is definitely reading um, the defender, but obviously 
you should know your players as well. I think it's really key to learn um, who you're playing with as well. Um, Because obviously, say someone is not strong in the air and you keep giving them a big long ball and you're like, well, damn, why aren't they catching it? But you didn't know that they actually don't like those high big balls. So I think definitely like even just sitting down with each other and learning like your strengths and weaknesses. um, And then, yeah, also, I guess just, but as you get older, you'll learn how to read like the play and read where the defenders are so yeah you can only get better and I think practice again makes perfect um I remember I had a off game with Amelia who was um the goal shoot in my team and then just um outside of training we went down to the courts and I just like fed her a couple of balls in a row just constantly just to try and grow that connection so yeah I think that was key as well I think we I think that's it is it 7 30 yeah Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's okay. It's all right. I'm letting you share. Good luck for the rest of your tournament. Stand up. There's no way.